Welcome back, everybody. The Insights and Analytics, we're talking standard reports today. It's Mark Bertrand here, by the way. Um, and standard reports, kind of a necessary evil in advertising agencies. Uh, I put this cartoon down here at the bottom of the page because it, it kind of a, oh, sorry about that. It kind of summarizes the, the, the insanity of, of standard reports. But we got we got two scientists standing here, some broken glass on the floor. The one scientist, he, he's got he's got the Merlin the Magician hat on, and he says, wait, I can predict the future by the shards of glass. And the other guy's just kind of like looking on with the broom and the dust penalty. Like, You're nuts. And the caption says, he did not always fit in well with the group think of other scientists. And that's that kind of summarizes what, what we have with, with standard reports. It's a necessary evil, as I said, because everybody just thinks that it's wonderful that we can go and we can look at what occurred in the past. Um, and and the, the results from the past are never a prediction of future performance. It's just never a prediction of future performance. It's said time and time again. Matter of fact, if you look at any stock market report, that's always the disclaimer that says past results are never a prediction of future performance. But we've got to do it, and so let's, let's see what we can do and, and how we can use insights and analytics to, to put, build it. So today's agenda, we're going to talk about tear sheets. These are the basic advertisers tool. We're going to talk insights and analytics reports. They're automated. It's great. Um, there's inclusions. We have just the receipts and Google Analytics. Really simple. And then we're going to start embedding data into the reports. Oh my, that's going to get a little bit sophisticated. Be prepared. Start taking notes. Paper and pen, please. Um, we're we're going to make it right with Photoshop. And then we're going to provide insights. So, oh my gosh, and anytime you start talking about math and data and charts and graphs, most people, 90% of the population, just curl up. They just go right away, oh, I don't know math, I can't do math, and they shrink. So what we have to do when we provide insights is we've got to talk really, really simple. You know, like I always say, use one-syllable words, please. All right? So tear sheets. Advertisers rarely create anything new. We, we copy old ideas, we'll modify, twist them, and reform them to suit whatever it is that we're trying to do right here, right now. And then we call it, hey, here's my idea. And the real, how this happens is that in your career in advertising, you need to be taking a look at everything that catches your attention. If you're looking at email and a subject line grabs your attention like, wow, that's a really well-written subject line. That made me open this email. Copy that and paste it into a document, a document that you call tear sheets. Advertising tear sheets and just start collecting these things. If you find a banner ad that you think that's sensational, that makes me think. That makes me look at that picture and I think about the product, the advertiser, the, the brand. Grab that, copy it, paste it into your catalog. Then start building your tear sheet. Every single day, add something new to your tear sheet. And you'll, you'll love this because when you're working with your team and you're trying to come up with the big idea, then Often going through your catalog, flipping through these ideas that caught your attention for it, it sparks that creativity that'll you know make the big idea come come to life for you. So there's tear sheets. Hey, speaking of great advertisements, here's one. So what do you think this advertisement message is? You could say, well, you know, we deliver the packages. But or maybe you say, well, they're they're advertising FedEx, and and it, and it is it's a FedEx branded commercial. But what the message really truly is is that you may think you're getting your packages from UPS, folks, but you're really getting it from FedEx because we deliver the packages, right? Kind of a clever ad. So with insights and analytics, we have a reports plugin. It's over on the left hand side of the menu. We're going to look at it here in a minute. And the really most important thing about this plugin is that you have to remember is that it stores everything in history. So however you have scheduled these reports, if you schedule it to run one time, it's going to deliver that report one time, but it's going to stay there in the reports plugin. If you schedule it to be run daily, 
then you're going to end up with 365 reports by the end of the year because it's going to generate a report every single day and it's going to store it there for, for a history. If you do it weekly, you're going to get 52 of them by the end of the year. If you do it monthly, you're going to get 12 of them by the year. And these are what we're talking today, the monthly report. It's the end of the report time. So we're probably going to be building these monthly. So let's take, I'm going to escape out of there. We're going to go over to the insights and analytics dashboard and I have selected a, a particular client here Diamond Kitchens and I've gone over to the left hand menu here where I've gone into the reports and selected the report builder and here's the history of, of the reports that I've been running I, I've got a monthly report already set up over here on this client and here's how many here's a, a review it's kind of nice because you can you can also see when you scroll through on the monthly reports in the history how many times that these have been viewed. So you can see that the uh, the one from July never got looked at, uh, the one from June got looked at once, uh, the one from May never got looked at. So that gives you kind of a, oh, but here, 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 the one from August uh, most recently got looked at seven times. So, so hey, we're, maybe we're getting popular. But hey, what you're gonna do then is you're gonna create a new report. So we mouse up here to new report, click, it's going to open up the report builder. Very first thing we do, number one, uh, taking notes, right? Everybody taking notes. We're going to add the logo. And you're going to request this logo from analytics at republicmedia.com. Just send a request to analytics at republicmedia.com and say, hey, I need the logo. And you'll get the logo. And then once you get that, then you'll be able to load it into your file. Then it'll be here and you're available. But you can choose the file from where you save it add the logo in and boom look at that there it is Republic Media Insights and Analytics now step two for the standard reports we're gonna add when we click on the add button you get everything that's available to you with within our Insights and Analytics report all the different modules and all the different tools well for a standard report we're gonna add Google Analytics so we click Google Analytics here's all of the selections within Google Analytics the different summary reports that you can add and and we're going to just add the summary the summary is really I, I've built it to in, include the overview of a line chart for the overview it's got all traffic it's got the referrals uh, it's got goals it, top traffic it's got the la top landing pages social referral table and the top events flow in these, these tools are pretty dynamic. You can go in, you can create a, a custom widget if you want to add something, a different metric. You can choose any of the metrics that are available within Google Analytics. But for this particular time, we're, we're going to just go to Add Google Analytics Summary. And then just like that, two-thirds of your report is automatically built just by adding the Google Analytics summary. It puts in the date range. If this is coming out monthly, you're going to see that it's going to be monthly. It also puts in a comparative range, so it automatically compares it to the previous 30-day period of time. And then as you come through, here's, here's the calendar that it puts in. And any type of uh, tags that I have put in here, for instance, in this grayed out, dark grayed out area here is a, a Panda update that came out July 17th. Um, so there, there you can see how that Panda update affected traffic or if it affected traffic. The other grayed out area is the rollout of Bing moving to HTTPS, secure servers. And, and so we're, we're getting quite a change from Bing and Yahoo here on the secure server side. So you can kind of look at those grayed out areas and see if there was any great impact. Doesn't look like it. Um, and then as you scroll down, you see that it gives you all traffic to the site. It was down 9% from the previous month. Referral traffic is up 24%. We want to highlight, I highlight referral because that's AZ Central and, and um, USA Today are referrals. Um, goals, we set the goals, we're down 4% in the goals. We got 640 completed. We can look down at the top traffic. Most of the traffic is coming from organic, then referrals, direct social. These charts are interactive, so if you want to sort, you can just click into the columns. The next section, it talks about the top referrals. 
Uh, so we see that uh, floating share being uh, is a referral. That's kind of weird. Um, the event tracking, that's a spam. Um, free social buttons, that's a spam site. Site for free, that's a spam site. Uh, and, and Google hasn't done anything yet to start filtering these particular spam sites out. But it, it's just kind of really neat because uh, when they, you show us up in the, in the client's analytics they're going like oh what's that and they go click and that's exactly what free social buttons wants you to do and, and it's just a bot that they send to the to the client site so that they can start showing up here but anyway that's another subject for a different time you can take a look at the top landing pages looks like everything's coming to the home page about 2152 the next highest is kitchen in stock was 349 so the vast majority is going to the home page that's the same home page is never a landing page should never be used as a landing page. You get the top social. They're, they're getting quite a bit of traffic from Yelp. Uh, they're getting very little from Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Very, very little traffic coming from social sites at all. They need some social help, huh? And then we look at the top events. Um, and the top events here is the is a locations. People that are looking for the locations and clicking on the locations is the event. And that's up. 11 percent so that's that's the first module that we're going to add into there let's go back and look at our presentation see if we're on track so we're going to we're going to add the summary uh, and then after you add the summary in there we go let me go back to the report we're going to add insights so the list of upsell opportunities so let's take a look how we do that we go back to the add button and we're going to add a text summary we just click on the text summary and we're going to put it into the section of Google Analytics. I don't recommend that. I would say put it after. So you're going to add a new section. And we can call this section GA Summary. Google Analytics Summary. And submit. So you see right here, it, it, it adds it to the report builder. You've got the Google Analytics, which we just went through. Now we just added the summary page right here. We can go into the summary page and we'll click the gearbox. And that's going to open up the WYSIWYG editor. WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. WYSIWYG. In, in about 1997 through 1999, this was all the rage. Oh my gosh, we can see what we're, we don't have to just code it. We can actually see what, what, what's going to happen, what people are going to look at. Before this, we were all just, the only thing you'd see was HTML until you published it. Um, but now you can do a WYSIWYG. So you can put in here, here's, uh, here's what you think the, You can just put in there what you think the data, the charts, and the graphs are actually saying uh, into actionable insights and, and the upsell opportunity for the salesperson uh, and, and you know how they're going to go make it happen. Uh, so you'll, you'll put your insights in, in here, what you think that charts and graphs are going to tell that salesperson so they can get out there and, and, and make a sale, what, what, the, what they should sell next. So... Uh, and there it'll stay. Yeah. Here's what I think, upsell ops, go make it happen. Uh, and of course, that'll be your words that you add in there. Um, so, you know, th things that we can get from Google Analytics is that we can tell them, you really need to install Tag Manager because we can establish conversions and event values. So for clients that don't have Tag Manager, um, yeah, that's, a, that's a real important message to that salesperson. You know, get Tag Manager on this site so that we can give you conversions and event values. We can actually show you dollars and cents what they're earning off their websites. Um, the other big deal from Google Analytics is dedicated landing pages for each campaign. No more sending all the traffic to the home page. It needs a dedicated landing page. And by the way, we sell these landing pages. It's another opportunity for a sale. So that, that's, that's a good message for the salesperson. And let's see where we're at here. I think that's pretty good. Now we're going to go, um, now we've got to get into the receipts. Um, and the receipts are for our, our reports are we're going to use Google Sheets and we're going to use Photoshop to translate what we get from DoubleClick, 
click fuel or ad networks such as ad network one media math ad network three which is yahoo by the way if you're not familiar with these ad networks we don't want to go out to clients and tell them that we use media math or that we're running your ads by the way on yahoo and media math or that we're using cars.com we, we like to go out to the to the clients and say you're running your ads through republic media and we have a variety of ad networks. And so internally, we want to say ad network one, ad network three, ad network four, so that when we're talking to the clients, we can also show in reports. This is from ad network three. This is our internal Republic Media ad network. So you know, start getting used to saying ad network one instead of media math and ad network three instead of Yahoo and such. Um, so we're going to escape out of here. We're going to go see how to make this happen. I'm going to use a, a double click example. So. We'll go over here to double click. Hopefully everybody is familiar with, with double click and, and how to get logged in. Hopefully everybody's got a login for double click. Um, and, and if not, um, Tammy's probably already got it on the radar and you'll have it very soon. Um, I'm going to look at, we're still looking at Diamond Kitchens and Bath. I've already created the report, but let's, I'm gonna open it up so we can take a look at what a receipt report should look like. The query name, you'll, you'll call it, uh, I call this one Diamond K&B, Kitchens and Bath. And I'm looking at, I want last 30 days, so that tells me this is the last 30 days. The date range, uh, I select to be the last 30 days, and I want historical. So I, I, I choose historical here from that, and I, and I make it the last 30 days. And then you start looking for the advertiser. Now there's no, operational procedures and operations that say here's how to add clients so it's kind of a, a hunt and peck you know you have to like start adding the, the client's name what you think it should be and then diamond kitchen around diamond casino diamonds direct and we're always c1531 so that kind of helps you can kind of scroll through here to look for c1531 we're getting close okay here's c15 all right, so that's really, I don't see Diamond Kitchens and Bath here at all. Um, oh no, so yeah, see, see what I'm saying? It gets a little bit weird to try and find. So you might want to go ask somebody how they or entered these in so that you can find each one of these clients. And then once you've got it in there, uh, they will, First thing we want to do is we want to sort it by the advertiser. First thing we want in here is we want this sorted by advertiser. So we select advertiser. I want the creative, so I, I've created, I clicked on the creative. Um, in the advertiser, I don't, I don't select any other items. I just want the advertiser information. I got a, I've got a line item coming in here with the, and, and I want the rate. I want to see the rate for that, that ad. Uh, we, we pull the, the creative in and I want to see the click through URL because we want to see what that landing page is. Are they sending all, all this banner traffic to, to the home page? We want to scream and yell and kick our feet if they are. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to build out the report metrics. And this is what the data is going to be in the report beyond that. We want impressions, total impressions. We want total clicks and that's it. We don't need any of this other stuff. All this other stuff is improperly calculated for how we're building your standard reports and so we skip all of that we come all the way to the bottom of the page now and <clears throat> we want to generate this report again you open this up and you can say how often do you want to do it all i want this monthly uh, i want this to start you know on the on the first day of the month because i want to capture the previous month the whole month so if you get these start coming to you on the first that's great and it never ends because this client is never going away and standard reports unfortunately are never going away either so apply we want this to come to us in a comma separated value Excel CSV we don't need any of this we're done so you can save and run your query here I'm just going to save my query here. I don't want it to run right now and what's going to happen then is this report is going to come to me every month <clears throat> on the first of the month sorry excuse me so here I'm going to go over to the reports I'm looking at my reports here's the last one that I got from Diamond Kitchen and Bath right so 
when when you get it's going to come to you in an email it's going to say hey there's a standard report here for you you're going to click on that email and, and here's where it's going to open up to and then you're going to go into export and you're going to export it right to the google drive and that's going to so you click that export to google drive it's going to open up your google drive here it comes, here it comes, and there's the report. Now, unfortunately, Diamond Kitchen and Bath didn't run anything with us from July 8th through August 6th. Um, but don't worry, I've got data. That's a pretty small one. I'd rather work with something large. Oh, um, hang on, just give me one second here. I'm going to find a bigger one. Um, Connecticut usually does some pretty big ads with this. Let's see if they, yeah, it's okay. So here's what your report will typically look like when you get it into the Google Drive. And you'll see you've got your advertiser that you asked for, and you've got a whole lot of other information, then the date, the advertiser ID, the order ID, all this stuff we don't need in a standard report, but it's nice to see. You'll have your impressions here. You'll want to change the name of this particular file. It usually comes out here and says, total impressions and then there's one that says total clicks just delete it, make it impressions you're taking notes right so you're going to have your impressions column just named impressions you're going to have your clicks column just named clicks all right that's pretty easy now we're going to data and we're going to collect select pivot table it's going to create a brand new sheet automatically just creates a brand new sheet so the very first thing that we want to do is add the row and the first chart that we're going to make are the creative okay taking notes writing down add the creative to the rows and you see that that pops right in here it just populates it with the creative and the second thing you're going to do is add the values first value you're going to run an add in here is the impressions you're going to add another value which is going to be clicks. So there you see that you've got your impressions, you've got your clicks. We're going to click over here in the D file, and now we're going to put CTR, which stands for, that's right, click-through rate. So we type the equal sign, equals. We click on the clicks. We hit the division sign, and then we click on the impressions, and then we press Enter. And that's how you calculate the click through rate. Everybody knew that, I'm sure. Click on that field you just created, that click through rate in. Scroll right up here to the percent, and it changes it to the percent. Double click on this little box here at the bottom, and it populates that formula all the way down through all the rows. Man, this is getting easy. Now I'm going to highlight these three rows and three columns right there. I'm going to center them. See, I just came over here, opened that up, centered it right on. Now you can see that this particular row title is bigger than the width of the column. So if you double click the line there, it'll automatically adjust the column width for you. Nice, handy. Wow, that's really cool. So now if we highlight the whole table, we're going to go up here to this boxy looking thing. And we want to add box all the way around so we click that box all the way around see how that just formats this whole thing so that everything's nicely boxed in and it's probably too dark I and mean, everything's like dark we, we don't like all that boldness so let's soften it up a little bit maybe take it to a grayscale on the lines that looks much much better and really the only thing we want highlighted here in bold text would be the, the grand total so we we can bold that text all the way across and then the rest of this here um, let's select a font color let's soften it up a little bit here so that it doesn't all stand out we just want the important things to stand out and once again we see that the names of these creatives are bigger than the column so if we double click that line again it'll automatically set the, the width all right so now we've got the creative here. So we'll double click down here where it says pivot table four. Let's double click in that and let's call this creative. I don't think it's gonna let me do that because you see I've already got one named creative. So I'm gonna call it creatives. 
Isn't this a great way to name creatives? I mean, can't you just tell by this right here exactly what that creative is all about? Oh, I wish operations would make this just a little bit more friendly, don't you? And, and this one's just a copy of this one. Isn't that great? We still have no idea. We know the size, but we don't know. But is this the bath? Is this the towel feature? Is this the campaign for... Yeah, we don't know. But hey, a lot of people want to see the creative. So here it is. Uh, we go back to our main pivot table now. We're going to go back to data. We're going to create another pivot table. There's always two for a standard report. Always two. The second one, we're going to make the rows the date. Bam, we click date, and sure enough, there it all populates in the first all the way through the end of the month. We go back down to our values, and guess what we're going to add in here? We're going to add in impressions. We're going to add in clicks. We're going to go out here to the D column. We're going to put in CTR, which is click through rate and if you remember correctly now we hit equals the click divided by the impressions enter all right we go up we click on that um, formula we make it into a percentage and then we double click the little box and it populates all the way down we highlight these three rows right there we open up the format and we center format the whole thing. Now we want to highlight all of it. We go into our box and we box it and it stays in that nice gray color we chose. That's fantastic. Look at that, huh? The sum of impressions is wider than the field. We double click the line. It automatically sets the, the size. Okay. Now this one's going to get a little bit trickier because we want to make a, a graph in our standard report. We want a graph here. So we never want to talk about clicks. We really don't want to talk about impressions. But in this particular graph, we, we need to have impressions. So I'm going to highlight the date and I'm going to highlight the impressions and I'm just dragging on down. I don't want the grand total. So I'm just going to highlight that. Now I'm going to push the CTRL key. I'm going to hold the CTRL key. I'm going to highlight everything in the click through rate. So I'm going to have all three of those fields. So the only thing that I don't have highlighted is clicks. We don't care about clicks. The only thing we're really important to us right here is the click-through rate. Because the click-through rate is going to tell you that that ad interacted with the, the, the user at what percent. So that, that's what the click-through rate does. It's not a judgment of whether AZ Central traffic purchases. It's, not a, it's just about how well did your ad communicate with the user. In this particular case, you might say, well, it didn't communicate all that well, or maybe we need to experiment with the ad so we get a better, but that's a different subject. Let's go ahead and make a chart. So right up here, we see insert chart. Click that, and we're gonna go to chart types. We're going to choose this guy right here, the combo chart, this gal, whatever you wanna call it. Now the combo chart, and now we go to customization. Let's change the title. This is what daily impressions and click through rate. We don't want the legend on the right. We like the legend at the top. It makes it a lot, look a lot better in the standard report. We don't want the legend to have a 12 point font. We want it to be a 10 point font. Taking notes. Everybody's taking notes. And then we go to the horizontal axis. We don't need it to say column one. We can just delete that. And we've got the access labels over here. On the, it's uh, over here. And we don't want that to be 12 point. We want that to be a 10 point font. Change it right there. Um, we come down. We see that there's this uh, sum of the left vertical on the axis. Get rid of the sum of information there. And then we change that over to 10. So we see that the sum, the sum of is gone. This has now become a 10 point font. We scroll all the way down here and we want to get to where we see the left axis, right? We go up just a little bit of that. And then we want to take the click through rate and we're going to push that over to the right hand axis. Boom, look at that, it comes right in there. So now this is the right hand axis over here. 
So that tells you that this line, the click-through rate, as you can see by this click-through rate, is over here on the right. But it's really kind of hard for anybody to see. Well, I don't really understand graphs. That's so math. Oh, my, I'm already dizzy. Oh, my gosh, there's percentages here. My head's spinning. Help me, help me. So let's help them out. Let's go back up here to the grid. And let's select that right vertical. And let's make that vertical an orange color. So you see now these, the font has now changed to orange. Let's go to the left vertical, which is supposed to be our sum of impressions, which is the blue bar. So let's change that font to be blue. And now you see that this number is blue, this number is orange. Kind of helps the user understand the orange line, the orange graph, the blue bars, the blue graph, and a hey, beautiful things. So now we can do an insert. Here's the graph. Now we want to take this graph and we want to drag it all the way to the top. So if you mouse over it you see a little and you just drag it up to the top of this table. I like to put it just a little below so it catches everybody's eyes when they're when they see it. Just a little bit below maybe one one, one and a half rows down. You know, you, you'll, you'll create your own views, and your own visual here. So there's, there's the, what we'll call the uh, daily. I'm just going to call it day because I've already got one over here called daily. I'm just going to call it day. All right. So that, that's how we, we create the pivot tables and the charts for both the creative and the day for our standard reports. So now we've got a bit of a problem. We've got to get this Google Sheet into our Insights and Analytics report so that we have it all in just one place instead of having to go multiple places and or instead of having to do a lot of cutting and pasting, we just want to have it all in one place so the sales rep can just come to the, our report and get everything they need. So how, how do we do that? Um, pretty darn easy really. We go to file and we go to publish to the web and when we see a pop-up window here we want to embed okay taking notes we got went to file publish to the web embed we want to select here the very first thing you want it to do is the is the creative so we, we select the creatives and you push publish and once you do that you're gonna get a warning message hey you're really gonna publish this and you say yes I really am and it gives you this iframe code and it's already highlighted and so we just do a control C CTRL key C you're gonna copy this iframe we're gonna go back over here to our report we're gonna add we're gonna add a text summary again we're we're going to put this into its own section. So we're going to add a new section. We're going to call it AZ Central. Right? All right. And we're going to put source. We're going to go to the source. So we're going out of the WYSIWYG and we're going into the HTML. So we paste. Take some notes here. This is this is kind of cool right immediately after the opening of the iframe, right after the word iframe, we're going to put in the word width. And we're going to put an equal sign. And we're going to open a quote. And we're going to put in 100%. And then we're going to close that. We're going to put a space. And then we're going to put the word height, H-E-I-G-H-T, equals. And we're going to put a quote. And we're going to put the number 750. And then we're going to close the quote. And we're going to hit a space. Now what I like to do, because sometimes I have to come back, I like to highlight that whole thing and copy it again. And I'll just submit. And once we submit it, then it's automatically going to go over here and it gets embedded directly. There it is. There's our, our beautiful thing. Now, if you need, if you see something that went wrong here, or something that you want to change, you can always open up the gearbox, right? And it's going to show you your your chart. You can go back into the source, and there and and there's your HTML. And it for some reason, and I haven't figured out how to debug it yet. But if you try to change anything here, 
it, it's just going to erase the whole page. So the best thing you can do if you need to make a change, actually, is to hit the X, cancel, delete that widget. So now it's gone. You go back into add, you go back into add a text summary. Um, you're going to put it into the AZ Central. Put your source back in there, and then and then what it, make whatever changes that you want to make. In this particular case, uh, this is the creative. It's not 750 highs. It should be like 350 highs. Usually pretty darn good for the creative. Um, so I'm going to submit, and there it pops in there, and that's yeah, that's better. And that looks just like what we have. Uh, I know we're working on Diamond Kitchen in the Bath, and this is for Connecticut. This is just a, a fake report right now. I'm just showing you how to build reports. Yours will say Diamond Kitchen and Bath if you're working on Diamond Kitchen and Bath. And, and also, let's, let's go back. Now we've still got the other page that we want to do. That's, that was the creative. Now what we want to do is embed the day. So again, we publish. You get the warning message. You accept the warning, and you copy the iframe code. We go back over here, we add, and we're going to add a text summary. We're going to add it to the thing we just created for AUZ Central. We go to the source, and we paste it in. We paste in our code. Right immediately after iframe, we type in the word, that's right, width. And we're going to make it equal to, quote, 100%. And cool, we put in a space, then we hit it. Here's the height, and this is the bigger one. This is, this is all 31 days that we're showing here, so this needs to be 750. Don't forget your quotes. And save yourself a little time, highlight it and copy it and in, case some, <clears throat> in case something goes wrong. And submit. And there we go. There's our embedded. Uh, table and, and graph for AZ Central. There's the daily, right below that is our creative. And that is our standard report for end of the month time. We got the Google Analytics and we got the summaries. 